welcome to this new video about testing four means of transport while you're out camping. Let's say you're camping out here, 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 or here. At some point you're out of the really important stuff and you need to go to do some shopping. No, 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 put it back. I said the really important stuff. Yes, that stuff. Now let's say that shop is about 10 kilometers away, too far to walk. You could take your RV, but no, far too impractical. You need some extra wheels. So I tested these four sets of wheels for you. The Falter, a conventional sized e-bike. The Scamper, a classical foldable bike. The E4 Motion Mini, a foldable e-bike. And the Ninebot Segway Kick Scooter ES4. Now which one is okay and can stay? First test, storability. Now there's one important principle here. I don't have something like this on the back of my bus. And I don't want it either. So whatever wheels I choose, they will have to be storable in my bus. Let's start with a conventional sized falter. Uh oh, too big here. And too big here as well. Sorry, probably a good bike. But the falter fails the test right at the start and has to go. That leaves us with these. Are they okay to store? Well, they are all foldable, so yes they are. And for now, all three can stay. And then about this foldability. To fold the scamper and build it up again, takes about four to five minutes. And the same goes for the E4 Motion Mini. And then the 9-bot e-scooter to fold and unfold 5.2 seconds. The scamper has a somewhat inconvenient folded shape, but is rather light. The E4 Motion Mini has a more convenient shape, but is a little heavier because of the battery and the motor. And the kick scooter is also heavy, but is very easy to carry with you. An advantage of these foldable sets of wheels, you can take them with you on a train easily. That is to say, if you're on the right platform at the right time. Next test, the ride. First, the scamper again. A classical foldable bike, not available new anymore. But secondhand it is there for about 50 to 100 euros. 20 inch wheels, 6 speed by Shimano and you will have to do the cycling all by yourself. Now to go to a supermarket 10 kilometers away and then back, that's a bit of a challenge. But hey, it's good exercise, so for now this little bike can stay. Second one, the E4 Motion Mini the foldable e-bike. Three speed in the rear hub, so you can ride it without the e-function. Three modes for pedal assistance, low, medium and high. A 180 watt motor integrated in the front wheel. 12.5 inch wheels, a range of 35 kilometers and a top speed of 18 kilometers per hour. If you want to go faster, you will have to do it yourself without further assistance. The price for a new one, about 650 euros. Finally, the kick scooter ES4. It comes with a display, three modes, slow, medium and fast, an app that communicates through Bluetooth and gives you information about speed, remaining range, etc. And it has cruise control. Now let's give it a try.
374 watts front wheel motor, a 45 kilometer range and a top speed of over 30 kilometers an hour. Wow, this thing is fast. And it does all the work. Oh, now we have a problem. I live in the Netherlands, that little blue spot there. And we have no mountains. This country is completely flat. It is even worse. Take a good look at this picture. And then the next. At least 26% of my country is below sea level. So flatter than flat. No mountains to do an uphill test. But what we do have is dikes. No, not the lady, but that. To keep the water out. And I happen to live at one. Yay! Now I know this is not a mountain and it's a very short slope, but if I take it a few times in a row, it'll do for our wheels test. Yeah. No, come on. But this dike could use a shave first. Thank you. Ready for the uphill test with that important stuff on my back. At the foot of this huge hill, the scamper. First time up is heavy but doable. The second and the third time this bike drains my energy, And after that, well. On a slope, this bike is far too exhausting. And I'm sure most of the important stuff will be gone before I get back to my bus. Sorry, but the scamper has to go too. Two sets of wheels left to go uphill. Starting with the E4 Motion Mini. Most certainly doable. It takes a little work, but I get up that slope pretty easily. The same goes for the 9 bot kick scooter. The specs say it can handle 15% slopes and ok it loses speed, but I get uphill without any work at all. Now what goes up must come down and then we need brakes. For the E4 Motion Mini that works fine with those two handbrakes. The kick scooter has two brakes as well, one on the rear wheel that hardly works at all. The other one is a magnetic brake in the motor. It works better, but make sure you don't bend over the steering bar, because then you're gonna flip over and crash. An advantage of the magnetic brake is that it recharges the battery every time you use it. Now after this final test, which one can stay and which one has to go? That is a tough choice. So I've made an overview of the specifications of the two, with their pros and cons and their test results. But even then, it's a tough choice. I'd say they both can stay. Okay, okay, if I really have to decide. 
This whole test was about conveniently doing camping shopping to begin with. So then I'd go for... Mm, just watch and decide for yourself. Well, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed it. Push the subscribe button if you like. And see you in the next video. Bye!